Today on the newscast, a critical Israeli base attacked by a Hezbollah missile barrage, plus Europe attempting to impose a Palestinian state upon Israel. Get all the breaking details next. Folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. We begin today with some very sad news. 21 Israeli soldiers were killed today in southern Gaza when a Hamas terrorist launched an RPG, a rocket-propelled grenade, that collapsed two buildings that had these soldiers inside. These 21 Israeli soldiers, they were reserve soldiers, were inside when the buildings collapsed on top of them, folks. This was the deadliest day so far since this war began after Hamas attacked, invaded southern Israel uh, on October 7th. So keep the people of Israel in your prayers right now. Pray for the loved ones, the families of those who lost soldiers today, and pray for the IDF. Pray for God's hedge of protection over Israel and Israeli forces in Gaza as they continue to seek to finish the job of destroying this demonic death cult known as Hamas once and for all. And it is a necessary job. I've got friends, folks, as I've shared here on the newscast in recent months, some very good friends who are reservists, who are in Gaza right now on the front lines. They've got wives, they've got kids at home, but they've answered the call to defend the world's one and only Jewish state. So keep them in your prayers. Uh, that's number one today. Number two, an attack on a critical Israeli air traffic control base in northern Israel by Hezbollah. We're going to break that down in a minute. Plus, the European Union saying Israel, and literally saying this, folks, Israel really has no voice and no say as to whether a Palestinian state will be established, even though said state would, of course, involve taking chunks of sovereign Israeli territory. No worries say a collection of European foreign ministers, Israel must agree to this or we will impose it on them. Talk about prophetic implications. We'll break that down as well. But up first, real quick, a programming note. I mentioned this on yesterday's live stream. Tonight, Tuesday, January 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, you can watch it on TBN and the TBN app. It's our State of the Nation Town Hall. Now, I got together with a great group of guests including former ESPN anchor Sage Steele, who recently left ESPN over cancel culture. They basically wanted to censor her conservative views. Uh, Kirk Cameron, host of Takeaways on TBN, obviously Hollywood actor uh, and producer. Pastor Samuel Rodriguez and our good friend Johnny Moore all join me for this great roundtable discussion, the State of the Nation 2024. What are the issues, the burning issues, that will affect we here in the United States where I'm sitting right now, but we've got viewers around the world. And all of these issues will profoundly impact you no matter where we live, uh, where you live. We'll break them down tonight. And of course, we'll get into, as a big part of that, what's going on in Israel and the Middle East, Iran, Russia, China, that gathering storm coalition, as we call them here in the newscast. We'll break all of it down, the move towards the Great Reset, a global economy, what happened at Davos this past week, a lot of subject we cover tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, State of the Nation. Okay, let's break down what happened atop Mount Meron today. Breaking news, a Hezbollah missile barrage struck this critical Israeli air traffic control base. Now, it lies in the upper Galilee region of Israel. It's about five miles from the Lebanon border where Hezbollah lives and breathes. And thankfully, there wasn't according to the Israel Defense Forces, any serious damage to this base. But nonetheless, folks, uh, a bold move by Hezbollah and reaching further. Usually Hezbollah has targeted the communities on the immediate border, uh, in the vicinity, the immediate vicinity of the Israel-Lebanon border. The Upper Galilee, a little deeper. Again, five miles from the border. That's number one. Number two, this is the second time that Hezbollah has struck this critical mount since January 6th. On that day, another Hezbollah rocket barrage also struck Mount Meron. And again, this is a critical intelligence base for the IDF where they can monitor what's happening in southern Lebanon uh, and in Syria in particular. And Hezbollah sending a message here, folks. This was retaliation yet again for the death, number one, of Sali al 
that top Hamas operative who was killed on Lebanese soil just south of Beirut, a Hezbollah stronghold. And look, Hezbollah vowed to retaliate for his death, but also there have been additional Hezbollah commanders, uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps commanders taken out, eliminated by Israel in recent weeks as Israel becomes more bold, more precise, and more targeting in the targeted in these eliminations of top figures in that Iranian-backed ring of fire, that axis of evil, Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, and the Houthis. So Hezbollah vowed a response at the time when al aruri was killed, and now you see these two strikes in the span of about two and a half weeks on Mount Meron. Israel says it responded to this missile barrage today by hitting what it called simply a sensitive military target related to Hezbollah and Iran in Lebanon. That, that's all the IDF said. They didn't go further than that. Perhaps we'll get more details on that target that will emerge uh, in the hours and days to come. But nonetheless, folks, I think Israel is clearly in a critical time here where it must take action against Hezbollah. Uh, in talking to Israeli officials, former and current military intelligence officials over the years and in recent months, all seem to say the same thing. When it comes to that great northern war facing off against Hezbollah in southern Lebanon and by extension in Syria, it's a question not of if, but when. I'm not so sure that Israel can allow this to continue much longer. And the main reason is, as we've detailed here in the newscast, look, you've got some 80, perhaps even as many as 100,000 Israeli residents of northern Israel who've been forced to evacuate from their homes. Can they go back if Hezbollah is perched at full strength on their border, staring across the fence at them in communities like Matula in northern Israel, with every intention of not only duplicating, but by several more magnitudes improving upon, in their view, what happened on October 7th? And Hezbollah is a much different beast, and I do mean beast, than Hamas. Much more powerful, better trained, better armed. So it's obviously a non-starter for the residents of northern Israel to go back to their homes when Hezbollah is still there on the border. Now, Israel says they've already made progress in pushing Hezbollah back some, that elite Radwan force of Hezbollah that's been on the border. But folks, at the end of the day, really Israel needs to push Hezbollah back, preferably destroy Hezbollah uh, so that it can no longer pose any sort of significant threat to Israel. But in the very least, in the short term, push Hezbollah back at least 20 miles from the border. And that means back towards the Latani River in Lebanon. Israel has said they want that to be resolved diplomatically. I don't see that happening. And Hezbollah will only, I believe, understand the language of force. Sadly, no one wants to see it, but this is a bloodthirsty terrorist paramilitary organization. Uh, and so they must be dealt with as such, just as Israel is dealing with Hamas right now. The alternative, again, is the looming specter of more October 7th style attacks, but this time in northern Israel, clearly a non-starter for the people of Israel. And this is the prelude, I believe, folks, to a great northern war uh, that Israel will be forced. They don't want it, believe me, but they're going to be forced to wage this war against Hezbollah and the Iranian regime in Lebanon and next door in Syria. I believe it has prophetic implications as well, and we'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. Before I do, a quick reminder, our good friends at Mayor Panim, who we support strongly here on the newscast, we're talking about these residents of northern Israel evacuated en masse from the border areas, also over 100,000 evacuated from southern Israel near the Gaza border. Folks, right now, these are people who are in shelters, they're in hotels, their kids aren't even in schools. This has been several months and they need hot meals, they need shelter, comfort. That's where Mayor Panim steps in, doing God's work quite literally, helping Israel's neediest and most vulnerable. You can check them out and support their great work at mpgive.org. Now, many people ask me here in our comments, hey, how can I help Israel? How can I bless Israel? I'm not there on the ground, but I want to help. I want to fulfill that biblical mandate laid out in Genesis 12, 3, to bless the people of Israel. Mayor Panim is a great way to do that, folks, and I can vouch for them personally because I've been on the ground in Israel with Mayor Panim, shoulder to shoulder, feeding Holocaust survivors, for instance. That's the kind of work that Mayor Panim does. 
check them out at mpgive.org. Now, as we close here, we talked at the top about the attempts to impose, yes, impose, a Palestinian state upon Israel. Now, I broke this down a little bit on yesterday's live stream. And by the way, if you miss any of our newscasts, just go in our archives under newscast. You can find it right there. While you're there, be sure to subscribe as well. Click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. But we talked about the foreign policy chief for the European Union, Josep Borrell. Now, a few weeks ago, he said, look, if Israel doesn't want to agree to a Palestinian state, the international community, quote unquote, will impose a state upon Israel, whether Israel likes it or not. Yes, folks, he really said this. Israel's a sovereign nation, just a helpful reminder, a sovereign nation that can make its own decisions about its own security and its own future, by the way. Thank you very much. But that's not the way many in the West see it, including, again, the foreign policy chief for the Euro European Union, literally saying, and I quote, he used the word, we will impose a Palestinian state upon Israel, whether they like it or not. He followed that up yesterday and today as well. Big gathering in Brussels of European foreign ministers, and Burrell was there, and some Arab officials as well. And it's the same kind of verbiage, folks, the same kind of language saying, look, uh, Israel doesn't seem ready to accept this. So we're going to have to impose it, and they have no right, Burrell said today, to veto it, meaning they have to just accept it. Now, the thing about that, is that a Palestinian state undoubtedly would require Israel to give up Israeli sovereign land. I'm talking in particular about Judea and Samaria, which the world calls the West Bank. But Israel has no say in that. Hey, Israel, we're just going to kind of come in and impose this upon you, the world, and take a chunk of your land, and you really have no say in it, and you must just accept it, and that's that. Folks, look, I could unpack this more, and I will, but as we wrap up here, just a reminder of where we are prophetically. I talked about the Great Northern War earlier. I believe that's laying the groundwork for larger biblical battles, prophetic battles, which, by the way, Israel, with a very large assist from the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, will emerge victorious, but it won't be easy as we head into the time of Jacob's trouble. But real quick, a quick mention, I think of the book of Zechariah, which says that Jerusalem in particular will become like a burdensome stone. The entire world, I'm paraphrasing here, the entire world will want a piece of Jerusalem. They'll covet it, but it'll be like a burdensome stone, and anyone who comes against it will be cut to pieces. Well, folks, guess what? The entire world is coveting Israel, Israeli land, Jerusalem right now. The, the land that God and the city, Jerusalem, that God Almighty has given to the people of Israel forever. What part of forever, eternally, does the world not get? We're about to find out because this is a groundswell now of a clamoring for that two-state solution, Palestinian state, including where I'm sitting right now, the Biden administration, all in on this as well. Folks, fasten your seatbelts. 2024 is going to be, let's just say, a very interesting year, eventful. That might be the understatement so far of the year, but keep it right here on The Watchman. We'll break it all down for you on a daily basis for such a time as this. Thanks so much for joining us here today on The Watchman. Until tomorrow, God bless you, and remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out The Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.